Hey folks, welcome to what I hope will be for you an exciting opportunity to help the MS Society of Canada fight multiple sclerosis, which is a terrible, terrible disease, and it's something I'm proud to help Zerfall try to fight once a year with this charity drive. Even though I probably should be thinking about organizing my own drive about my own medical issues, I'm lazy. Therefore, let my goodwill go towards helping someone who's already got a charity stream going. Now, I want to stress really quickly... This is a video where I'm going to go through the character creation process and give you an opportunity to donate money to a charitable cause and get a character in my upcoming Let's Play of Nobunaga's Ambition Taishi. There will be no gameplay in this video. We are less than a minute in, and I have told you, there will be no gameplay in this video. Literally last this last weekend, within the last couple of days, I got a video, or a comment, on my like three-year-old video about a previous opportunity where, even though I said within the first 60 seconds, and said it was a call to arms in the title of the video, and said there was no gameplay in the description of the video, I had somebody pop up three years later to say, I was trying to decide if I wanted to buy the game. I didn't need to watch you talk over m menus for an hour. So, just let it be known, there's no gameplay in this video. I'm going to be talking over a menu, hopefully not for an hour. And if you don't want to watch that, you should stop now. And if you want to make a comment that there's no gameplay in this video, even if you think you're being funny, uh, like it's cute, like, you know, wink, wink, nudge, JG, I know there's no gameplay in the video, but I'm going to make a comment and be salty for fun, you're still an asshole, so don't do that. All right. Now, in the description below uh, of this video, you will see a link to um, the MS Society of Canada's uh, webpage where you will be able to donate as part of Zerfalls. Zerfalls, another LP, by the way his annual charity stream that he's doing. The charity stream itself is actually coming up on uh, Saturday the 18th. Uh, I don't actually remember the time, start times, stop, stop times. Surfall has his own video, which I will link to in the description below, where you can go find out more about the charity stream. Uh, over the last couple of years, I and a couple of other LPs have tried to set up uh, incentives for people to donate. I can't speak to whether anyone else is able to do it this year, but I'm going to go ahead and do something I've done for the last several years where I do a let's play of either Nobunaga's Ambition game or a Romance of Three Kingdoms game where you can create officers, and if you donate money, I will create an officer and you will be part of the story, the let's play. Now, this year, uh, the cost is going up. It's going to be $120. If you donate $120, you are guaranteed to have a character in my let's play if you want one. Uh, why 120? Previous years, I did like 25. I got way more submissions than I could handle. I upped it to about 100. That was more reasonable. I'm going to 120 because once in a blue moon, somebody does come along and say, JG, I wish you had a Patreon. I love your channel. I'd love to support you. Um, I don't have a Patreon. I don't plan on getting a Patreon. But if anybody out there is in that, like, wow, I love JG's videos. I, I wish there was a way to support him. You can kind of do this instead. Instead of, uh, you know, giving me money, Give money to a charitable cause, and uh, by my math, a $10 pledge to a Patreon that doesn't exist times 12 months would be $120 is about what you would have given me in a year. So that's where I'm setting it. It's $120. One of the links below will also be, uh, I mentioned it will be to the MS Society of Canada. There will be a donation page. You'll be asked to put in payment information. You'll be asked to put in the... Um, how you want to be known on the donator screen, whether you want to be anonymous, etc. There's also a place for you to put in a comment. What I'm going to ask everybody to do who wants to donate $120 or more, feel free to donate more, um, is to put in their comment, which Zerf may or may not read on the air during the stream. Just mention in the comment that you want a character in the JGLP, and that makes my life a lot easier. Zerf can just send me a list of people whose comments said they wanted a JG or they wanted a character in my Let's Play. That would be a little easier. In previous years, there's people who didn't know anything about my channel, didn't care donating because they're friends of Zerf, or just good people who want to fight MS, and therefore I would be trying to find uh, character submissions from people who donated, you know, donated, but had no interest in being part of this. And my life would be easier if you just donate... And in that comment window, you can say other things. You can tell Zerf how awesome he is, whatever. But just in passing, mention, oh, and I want a character in JG's Let's Play. You can even give me the YouTube name that you're under in case it's different from the name you donate under. Just makes it easy. Because when you actually create your character, you'll be doing it through the comments to this video. 
All right, so uh, full disclosure, I actually already recorded a video, and um, I hadn't played the game at all, and I got a couple things wrong, so I'm redoing it, and I'm hoping I can do this a lot faster. I created Mysterious JG, or JG Mystery, live in that video, which will never see the light of YouTube, uh, because I did a bunch of stuff wrong, and I've gone back and fixed it. So here's the basics. JG Mystery. You'll notice he doesn't have the same portrait as he had in previous Let's Plays. That's because that portrait seems to be gone, and I'm bummed. Um... I got this game as a gift. I hadn't actually intended to buy this game, but it was purchased for me as a Christmas gift. So I went ahead and bought all the DLC for it, so I've kind of bought the game at this point. So we should have access to all the faces that you could possibly get, unless there's ones you unlock by winning the game. Nevertheless, I couldn't find JG Mystery's portrait. So we're going to go through um, the character creation process real quick, so you'll see how to create a character. And again, $120. You're guaranteed to have a character in the doesn't matter how many... I don't think I'll get so many $120 donations that I'll be overwhelmed. But um, if I don't get a lot of takers, um, I may do an update video where it's like... It's possible I'll do an update video where it's like, okay, if you donate 50 or more, um, the uh, I'll put your name in a hat and I'll pick 10 people who donate 50 to be... Whatever. But right now it's just $120 and you're in, guaranteed. And it's a good cause and you should support it. If you can. So what I'm going to do is take you through the portraits. They're in-game portraits. You can't use these. I suppose if you really want, there's a couple of ones that are not attached to a specific person, such as Merchant or Page. But I really don't want you guys using these. Um, white Monkey and White Cat included, as awesome as those would be. We're not using these. Um, the EXD portraits... Some of these are just like reskins, and some of these are already attached to a character. William Odama from Neo. Uh, I don't know who this fellow is, but he's got a portrait. Uh, this guy has a portrait. That's like actually a lady has a portrait. There's only one exception to the rule about how you have to pick one of the generic portraits, and you can't pick a character portrait that's already associated with a character in game. And that's that if Zerf wants, he can be this guy. <laughs> you have that option, Zerf. You don't have to be this guy, but you can be this guy if you choose. Otherwise, please pick from one of these. So, I hope you know how rows and columns work. If you ever used Excel before, these are your columns. These are your rows. So you can see each portrait. It would take me a while to go through them and show you the big close-ups on all of them. So I'm afraid I'm not going to do that. Instead... If you are donating $120 and you want to have a character, I would recommend that you give me three portrait choices uh, listed from the most desired to least desired, so that if you are like the second person to create a character and the first per you both you and the first person both wanted this guy, then I'll fall back to your second choice. And in all likelihood, you, if you have three different choices, it's very unlikely that all three of your choices will be taken by somebody else. Anyway. So this is row one, column one, row one, column two, row one, column three. This would be row two, column one, row two, column two, row two, column three. Hoping you guys understand how that works. Here's a pretty cool looking portrait. So I'm just gonna go through real slow. Here's row one, row two, row three. Here's row four, row five, which has the old school Zer Fall, Zer Uncle Baldo fur previous. That was row 5, I think, wasn't it? Two, three, four, five. yep. Row 6, which has Kabuki person, also has like, crazy frilled neck man. Here's row 7, has a ninja. Row 8, has more ninjas and a bucket head. Row 9, that's got uh, Lethal's old character in it. Row 10, Master Miller showing up here. Row 11, row 12, Earl King is in there. Row 13. Row 14. Row 15. Row 16. Row 17. I've got a couple of characters I recognize from previous playthroughs, including Bobo. Row 18, which is the JG Mystery Row. Row 19. Row 20. Row 21. It's got Grimoth and Monkey Merc. Row 22. 23. The Bloody Handed, 24, 25, 
26. There's 26 rows. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. Pick your favorite character portrait from these. Give me a row and then a column. Pick three. You're off to the races. Unless you want to be a female character, in which case... There's an interesting portrait to choose. We've got these here. Row 1, row 2, row 3, row 4, row 5, row 6. A little Konoichi action there. Row 7, row 8, row 9. Kamehato's up there. A couple of characters I recognize here. Vulture Bean. Start over. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Vulture Bean in the middle there. 10. Cariando over there. 11, 12, 13. 13 rows, and uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 columns, except the last row doesn't have a full set. Quite a few female portraits to choose from. Uh, it's always fun when people submit female characters. Uh, it leads to more people with weird um, shipping going on in the comment section. <laughs> Whatever. It's all good. And then the EX portraits. These are like... I paid for these. This is DLC. But um, some of them seem quite silly. It's just... Um, I think it's just like re recolorations and stuff of uh, female characters. It's mostly female characters. There's a few males. But these are characters who already exist in the game, and they're like alternate portraits of them, I think, sometimes. Maybe not. I don't know. It's confusing. But the EX ones are up for grab. This is row 1, row 2, row 3, row 4, row 5, row 6, row 7, which has got like, you know, cover face guy. Row 8, row 9, row 10, row 11, and row 12. And remember, these last four, William, this guy, this lady, and uh, Sokyu Mi are off limits. Unless Zerfall wants to be Sokyu Mi. This guy is actually a, um, and a, he would not wear a bow tie. This is, this is just them being silly. But he is, in fact, a real historical figure who is the master of the tea ceremony. And uh, apparently a bit of a foppish dandy. Other cool lady portraits are available. And a couple of cool dude portraits. That guy looks pretty scary, huh? Wouldn't you like to donate $120 and get a chance to be that guy? Various cool uh, bullet head uh, hats are available. It's quite an adventure to be had. There you go. Those are the faces. Don't choose the one I chose. Um, otherwise, you're good to go. Name. Give me a first name. Give me a last name. My name is written out as JG Mystery. In previous Let's Plays, I tried to be Mysterious JG. First name Mysterious, last name JG. They flipped it, Japanese style, so it became JG Mystery because Mysterious didn't fit. And thence I've been pretty much JG Mystery since then in these games. But it looks like in this game, if you put first name, last name, that's the order in which it will appear. Resolve. Resolve, I'm going to tell you right now, it doesn't matter. Resolve is something the daimyo of a force, their resolve gives them passive bonuses. So I gave myself territorial expansion based on a quick glance at a fact, which said that's a decent generic one. But uh, I mean, what I can do is I'll read, I can go through the names, but each one has like all these different ta uh, things associated with it. And I'm not going through them all in detail because I don't think this is going to matter. Your character is going to be a daimyo for my force. I think I sh probably should have mentioned that earlier. Everybody's just going to be a, it's going to be uh, not a daimyo. Everyone's going to be an officer for my force. I've done it in the past where officers fought for different forces. I find it simpler to just dump everybody into my force, give myself a head start. It makes it a little easier. I mean, I'm not. It's 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 also more fun by and large for people because you actually get to see your officer more often if they're not involved in an AI force on the other side of Japan that we don't interact with. But yeah, you are going to not you're not going to be a daimyo. You're going to be an officer, so the resolve doesn't matter. But I'll run through them in case you care. Uh, you want to, you know, role play as a character. Armed unification, just governance, just war, dragons rise, public defense, ascension, shogunate restoration, rebirth in paradise, which is kind of a uh, Buddhist one. Psycho coalition, six coins, total unity, lord of the west sea, warlord of the three states, territorial safety, clan longevity, territorial expansion, unification, Christian protection, that's the Christian versus Buddhist one, rising up. World Without Conflict, Independence, Fool's World, Total Peace, Kohoku Justice, Second Capital, Sengoku Villain, Ancient Rule, Bando Taro, I don't even know what that is, Viceroy of Japan, 
Middle Country Ruler, Minister of Five States, One for All, Unbreakable Friendship, Filing Moon, Filling Moon maybe, Tiger of Joshu, Tiger's Advance, Crusade, Heir of the Tiger, Brawn and Brain, Peace Through Law, Grand Pirate, Ruler's Eyes, Unyielding, As a Phoenix, Master Schemer, Viper of War, that one sounds fun, Succession, Unveiled Brilliance, B is Water, Modern Juge Leong, by the way, is, uh, is a, uh, a series of different traits that are all about being good at sieges. Because I, I initially built my characters like, oh, Modern Lu Juge Leong sounds like a great strategist, but it's all about siege. And uh, also, I spent more time thinking about resolve than necessary because it turns out it's not going to matter. My character won't be the daimyo. Natural Adjutant, Undefeated, Unmatched Valor, When the Rain Falls, Land of Li, from the Knights Who Say Li. Guardian of Sanada, Mightiest in Japan, Night Demon Skills, North Star, Lord of Kith, Brute Force, Lightning God, Western Dynasty, Watch the Celestial Way, and Plot Battle. Again, each of these has, like, all these different things. I don't think you start with all of them. I think some of them you start with, some of them you unlock. Uh, according to a fact I read, and actually, let me quick get the name of the guy who wrote this fact, because it was kind of handy to put, piece together a few things really quickly to make this video. Um... And uh, it's a fairly new fact, so there might be mistakes, there might be things that need to be updated, but Saig Saigvon Wall on GameFAQs, well, it's actually put this thing up in February, it's the last time it was updated, so hopefully it's correct. But yeah, he's, he uh, gave some thoughts that were helpful for this, so I'm giving him a little credit. But yeah, your resolve doesn't really matter that much. Now we'll go to character. You need to pick a gender, dir, and a tier. Uh, I've never been clear on this, but I think this just affects how much it costs to hire you as an officer for the first time. So it's probably not really going to matter, but I gave myself S tier because that would mean I'm the most expensive officer out there. Uh, so I gave myself free spirit, but there's different voices. You can be a boy. I swear I will achieve my resolve. You can be single-minded. You can be cool. I swear I will achieve my resolve. You can be dashing. I swear I will achieve my resolve. You can be a genius. I swear I will achieve my resolve. You can be cruel. I will do anything I must to achieve my resolve. You can be a regional hero. I will achieve my resolve. By the way, they are not separate for the females, so you can be stern. I swear I will achieve my resolve. I swear I will achieve my resolve. Just showing that that's different, because I thought I was going to have to go through this whole thing twice, but it turns out there's a few female ones at the bottom. You can be silent. I swear I will achieve my resolve. It's funny, that doesn't sound like silent to me, but okay. You can be free spirit, which is what I did. You can be brave. I will not die before I fulfill my resolve. You can be a leader. I swear I will achieve my resolve. You can be an adjutant. I swear I will achieve my resolve. This doesn't matter that much, guys. I'm just going through it so you can hear it. You can be refined. My life will not end until I have fulfilled my resolve. You can be a petty villain. I swear that I will achieve my resolve. I don't get that for petty villain. You can be a conspirator. I will do whatever it takes to achieve my goal. You can be old man pleasant. The time has come for me to fulfill my resolve. Old man calm. I shall fulfill my resolve. You can be a daring female. I will fulfill my resolve. It's just probably faster this way now. You can be a calm female. I swear that I will fulfill my resolve. Maybe you should be female so you have fewer choices to make on this. You can be confident. I swear that I will fulfill this resolve of mine. Oh, you're not a female, by the way. You're now a princess. You can be a gentle princess. I will fulfill my resolve. Or you can be a youthful princess. I swear to achieve my resolve. Which is the Jing side voice. We're hot blooded. I swear I will achieve my resolve. Check it and see. I'm going to go back to free spirit. Now you can set up your ideals. All this does is affect how well you get on with other officers. I don't think it does anything else. Your ideal can be fame, advancing the clan, uh, making the most of your talent, I suppose, achieving profit, achieving justice, uh, ambition, or master. I really don't even know at the end what these... I went with... Uh, oh, and rebellious. You can be rebellious. But I went with uh, talent. And then your rebelliousness, I believe this is the this is a one through fifteen score. This just works this is one of the things I got wrong in the previous video, which is why I'm redoing it. Uh you may recall in Nobunaga's ambition, um 
was it Rise of Power, Iron Triangle? I don't even remember what the one I, I uh, Let's Played is called. They got so many different sub names. But uh, yeah, they had a, a 1 through 15 kind of minimum satisfaction score before you started like being um, a douche and trying to leave the force. And you're, you can have officer happiness scores ranging from 1 to 20. And then you set the lowest score, like if it goes below this, your your officer becomes unhappy and starts considering leaving the force. So the default is eight, which is about, which is a little over halfway up the scale, because uh, fifteen is the is the most kind of picky you can be. I went with three. I don't want to be like a complete, uh, like you can do anything. You don't have to reward me ever, and I'll be fine. But um, I don't particularly want to see my character leaving the force. Other people, this is one of those where if you really want to role play, you want to have a specific character in mind um, that you're thinking of, and to like, uh, like I remember Cariando's character right up was talking about how she's always dissatisfied and she's never really sure what she's after, and she's restless, and that was like part of her character, that it took a lot of work before she sort of settled in and, and found a place in Masamune Date's force in a previous playthrough. So she would have had a rebelliousness, which was called something else in that game, of 15. Uh, rebelliousness of one basically means you are absolutely loyal to the clan. Uh, you are serving the clan that you work for, and that's you put everything into their success, and you don't look for any kind of personal reward. If somebody offers you a gift, that's nice, but you're never going to defect under any for any reason. Um, so that works for that. And then abilities. Okay, here's another reason I'm redoing this video because I did the abilities wrong. Uh, there's five abilities again. Uh, as there have been in a lot of the RTK games, then they went down to four. Now we're back up to five. Uh, I saw one called four. I figured that had something to do with fortification, like a combat-specific one. No, it turns out four is for formality, and it basically is the same as charisma was in some of the prior games. So this affects how you do with diplomacy tasks. Uh, as a result, JG Mystery, who is designed to be a domestic officer... Uh, I usually give him really high intelligence and pull. This time, I went with really high pull and f uh, formality. So he's really good at building up facilities, good at building up trade routes, good at negotiating with other clans. And his intelligence, this is something that came as a surprise to me. These don't work the same way they used to. Leadership is how good of a military officer you are, like a general. Valor gets more into how good you are at personal combat. And intelligence is how good you are at using and... Uh, uh, sort of evading, I guess, or overpowering enemy strategies. So these top three are all only combat. There may be stuff like you go in and, and drill troops. I haven't played much of the game yet where these things come in, but basically these three are for combat, these two are for non-combat. So leadership, valor, intelligence, pull, and four. Um, let me add these up real quick here. Because we're doing the same... Uh, scores as last time we're stretching it no we're not it's 400 because uh, what I realized is last time we had um, last time I think we had like I'd set it up so you could have a 70 in everything and that way if you didn't want to split your stuff at all you would be kind of like above average that would be 280 that's not right maybe it was 75 yeah, I gave you 300 points in a previous one where there was four skills to split between. Figuring if you split it evenly, you were you were above average at everything. Because I kind of want people's created characters to be pretty powerful and good, right? But uh, in this case, 75 times 5 yields, wait for it, wait for it, 375. So I think I did that wrong. Hold on a second. 60 plus 60 plus 90... Plus 95 plus 95 equals 400. Yeah, I did it. I did it wrong. I gave it. Okay, I gave myself too many points. So we're gonna redo this real quick. 75 times 5 would be 375. So I gotta lose 25 points, and I'm gonna take them out of leader. Will now be 50. Valor will now be 45. Because I'm not going to be... JG Mystery is not going to be a big military officer. So 50 plus 45 plus 90 plus 95 plus 95 
equals 375. So you have 375 points. Distribute them. Leader is... Um, I don't 100% know exactly what they do. It used to be leader was damage dealt, valor was damage received. Uh, it enters into it somehow. But basically, leadership is like you're a competent military officer as far as like commanding and leading troops. But not specifically like brilliant strategies. Just general leadership ability, inspiring men, organizing forces. Valor is like your personal combat badassery. So like Zhu Ge Liang would have incredibly... like. He's not a Nobunaga's ambition character, but he would have really high leader, really high intelligence, low valor, because he's not going to be fighting in duels. Zhang Fei would have good lead, really high valor, low intelligence, because he was like a man who's worth a thousand men on the battlefield, and he knew how to lead soldiers, but he wasn't a clever tactician. Then Pole gets down purely into like actually building up economy and agriculture, and formality is the one that is about um, diplomacy. So, there we go. Now, we get six different qualities that we get to choose. Uh, regular officers don't have six. They, they have, like, space to learn more. But we're starting out ahead of the pack because, what the hell, why not? So, you can take your time and read this slowly. Um, I'm just going to go through real quick. Uh, got a couple siege ones, fortification ones, some supply line stuff. You can pause and read anything that's of interest to you. Cavalry and muskets, spy networks, lightning speed, ninja scouts, blade master. Got some morale stuff, field development. Now we get into the ones I picked for myself because they're more about uh, politics. So like I gave myself irrigation talent, so I'm better at irrigating farmlands. And f fertilizing farmlands increases because this game has a new farming system that involves doing different things at different times of year and actually appears to involve farmlands getting worn out if you don't ir if you don't fertilize them properly trade zone management urban planning oh i probably should have given myself that one actually i'm kind of surprised i didn't let me get rid of this irrigation one. Oh, urban planning i do have never mind it was uh, not grayed out because i'd already picked it sorry naval and mine management more logistics uh, Sakai connections, Sakai connections, muskets and horses are cheaper in trades. So I don't know how some of these things. I don't know if they affect anything if you're not the daimyo. Uh, muskets legal expert. This would be a good one for someone to get. Our aggression will increase because um, aggression is a factor in this game. Where if you win battles, the morale of your army increases, and if you achieve, achieve certain objectives, then your people start clamoring for peace. You want to have high aggression if you want to continue to expand. Influence, Imperial Connections, Buddhist Connections, Rebellion Queller, Medical Knowledge, that would be a good one for any infantry commander, Supervisor, Family Unity, Public Unity, I'm just going through Fickle, a fun concept, but um, basically you can read them, you can pick which ones you want, and you get six. Tactics? Same deal. I'll just come through them real quick. I didn't spend a lot of time worrying about this with my character because JG Mystery is not going to be a military officer. But uh, these are all tactics that you use in battle. And tactics are something where your officer will occasionally just suggest a tactic and I can use it or not use it. So it's not an automatic thing that happens on its own. Excitable boy, they all said. Hamstring. Flower of war. Ogre Sakon, Ogre Mino, there's a lot of his manly valor, Thunder God, Pierce Through, Full Speed, Against All Odds, Warlust, Ninja Scouts, Death Drive, and then the second tactics are actually a different set, because I think these are like super high-end tactics, Six Demon King, Echigo Dragon, they've got really cool names, but you can read what they do. There's not that many, and they're a lot of them like, you know, one eyed dragon. Seem character specific. Old Tiger's Roar. Ogre Yoshishige. I mean, you can take any of those, but obviously some of them are associated with specific historical figures. And then plans. Maybe this is. I'm probably confusing plans with tactics, but again, you get to pick two, so pick two. Woodpecker. Lure Provocation. 
I think these might actually be the ones that show up in, um... I chose Phantom. It's a great new video game called Phantom. I'm sure if all you better watch this video. Not only did I reference Phantom, I've given you the opportunity to be the dandiest Baldo of all. And, uh, looks like this is actually the same. You just get to pick two from this list. So, there you go. Now we've got relatives. You can pick a father, you can pick a relative. Uh... Don't mess with that. I, I don't really have any interest in setting anything like that up. I guess I'll make a Balter Bobo character, and he will be my relative. But it doesn't look like you get to... It doesn't look like this game has marriage. Which is weird. So I guess I'd have to do some kind of daisy chain. Like, my relative would be Bobo. Bobo's relative would be Bean. Bean's relative would be me. I'm not sure how that works. Birth to death. Uh, I haven't decided 100% which um, scenario I'm going to do. So what I would recommend, I'm probably going to do one of the early ones and play as the um, Shimazu. That's the plan right now. The Shimazu are an up-and-coming clan in Kyushu. They, uh, other than the Date, who surrendered without a fight after the Shimazu were defeated, and the Hojo, they're like the last clan uh, that was standing to fighting against Hideyoshi. Um, really, other than the Hojo, they were the last clan to fight Hideyoshi before Hideyoshi took over Japan. Um... And, uh, yeah, I'd like to start. I'd like to play as them, probably in a fairly early scenario. But since I haven't decided for sure yet, uh, what you want to do is just tell me how old you want to be. Lifespan, you can set if you want. I'm defaulting everybody to 110. That's the longest lifespan the game gives you. Uh, if you want to have a shorter life than that, let me know. But otherwise, just tell me how old you want to be at the beginning of the scenario. And that way, once I figure out what scenario I want to do, that's I'll make you the right age. And location... Um, I'm just going to put everybody, unless I change my mind, I'm just going to drop everybody in um, Shimazu territory. So you don't have to worry about figuring that out. And there we go. You got to have a face and a name. Don't worry too much about a resolve, although you can pick one. You got to come up with a gender, a tier, set on a scale of 1 through 15. How big of a pain in the ass are you to keep happy and within the force? Pick a voice, pick an ideal. 375 points to be distributed across these five abilities. Pick six qualities. Pick two tactics, pick two plans. Um, don't get into the relatives and file. I mean, if you really, really, really have a real life officer that you want to be related to, I guess, whatever. I'm not. If um, Alden Zerfall decide they want to be related, sure, whatever. Otherwise, uh, yeah, tell me how old you want to be at the beginning of the scenario, and, and that's all we got to do. Um, so again, $120. Everybody's going to be on my force. I'm not bothering with something I did in previous years where you could go on different forces. I'm just having everybody. It's 120 bucks, so I, I don't expect to have, like, you know, dozens and dozens and dozens of takers. But uh, 120 bucks, it'll beef up my force, give me some extra muscle to help me play through my first ever playthrough of this game successfully. And uh, it means that you'll get to be in, uh, involved and you'll get to see your character because you'll be in the force that I'm playing as instead of showing up once in the entire LP when we fight your force and defeat you. Um, other than that, 120, donate deserves charity stream, show up for the stream, it'll be fun. Mention in the comments that you are donating and that you want to be part of this um, Nobunaga's Ambition Let's Play. Uh, if you're worried about not getting to do exciting stuff in the LP, um, this is not necessary, but I have found uh, not necessarily a conscious decision, but as people comment a lot, and certain people particularly were like commenting in character as their characters they submitted, like getting into like the role playing aspect of it, like, I don't know, sometimes a bit more, more into it than I was expecting, quite frankly, but. Those people did tend to... I tended to use them because, uh, like, give them tasks. Try to find things for them to do. I haven't played this game enough to know, like, to what extent do you get into micromanaging individual officers. So maybe you'll all just go into a big pile of officers. You get randomly tasked to do stuff, and I don't make that many menu decisions about it. I hope not. It'd be more fun for you guys if, um, if it's not like that. But, um... Yeah, if you donate your 120 bucks and you want to get the most out of the LP, just uh, speak up in the comments and talk about what your character's doing and how they're feeling and how much they're enjoying working for the Shimazu. And um, hopefully I'll see you guys um, as we conquer Japan one more time to fight MS in Canada.
Bye for now.